Hello, I'm Barbara Wheaton, and I'd like to tell you something about my project, which I'm calling The Sifter. Let me start by thanking Alan Grieco for inviting me to be part of this wonderful virtual gathering. The Sifter is a finding aid and a searchable database. It is free to all registered users. And like Wikipedia, the data contained in the Sifter will be contributed and edited by registered users. I began reading really old cookbooks back in the 1960s as I read my way through Harvard's remarkable collection of very early cookbooks. I began to realize that I needed a system that would allow me to look at both the small bits of information in the recipes and the bigger, often less explicit statements about health, class, and lifestyles. It became impossible for me to keep the information in these books both in my head and separate from each other. I had to devise a system to record the distinct details each book each recipe contained in such a way that I could reference them for comparison at a later date. I had been an art history graduate student at Harvard and studied with the great Jakob Rosenberg, who made the point that you should look at all aspects of a work of art, its place in the artist's oeuvre, the techniques, the iconography, and its life after it left the studio. If you didn't have this information, you could not have a full view of the work of art. It is Jakob Rosenberg's method that I came to use in looking at cookbooks. Who wrote it? Who bought it? Who would use it? When would it become too old-fashioned to be practical? Are there ownership marks, book plates, comments on specific recipes, grease spots? Cookbooks live dangerously. What were the specific significant political and societal events happening in the time and place where the book was written? Wars, plagues, famine, cast long shadows. Are there movements of recipes within the European world? When is tradition valued over originality or the other way around? What other books existed at the same time and were they similar? Can we track new world foods moving differently into various parts of Europe? This is all information that can reveal much about the recipes. What makes the sifter different from other research tools is the, the ability of the user to add all the minutiae of a work, a cookbook, for example, to the database and then compare it to what else exists in that database, including multiple editions of the most popular books. Context is everything. The sifter is just in its early stages, so there are not yet huge amounts of data in it but it is gaining steam. In the two months since it, its launch, we have required 4,500 registered users, and some of them have begun to contribute. A contributor begins by entering the author, the title of the book, the sections, recipes, and then the items, the granular details, which include ingredients, actions like sift and bake, and materials, whether wax paper or cotton, the items list contains at present about 2,600 of the most common words associated with cooking. Although this meticulous data entry sounds like a ridiculous amount of work, the rewards are significant. In the near future, with the addition of data visualization cap capabilities to the sifter, it will become possible to track ingredients as they move around the world or even disappear and to track the introduction and history of a method, as well as origins of recipes, religious practices that came and went, the beliefs about nutrition and the medicinal properties of foods and techniques. Accuracy will be critical in a project like this because it creates the baseline against which everything is refracted. If the data input is not accurate, the results will be misleading. At the virtual Oxford Symposium on Food and Cookery Conference in July, we had the good fortune of being offered 5,000 early German and French books and manuscripts and recipe collections that have been parsed for another amazing project called Corima, a project you will be hearing about. In the near future, optical character recognition will be accurate enough for us to start scraping books that have already been digitized. This will speed up the process considerably. I would encourage you to poke around the sifter and try adding some data, see where there is a void and fill it. This is not the first time in history that facts have been in dispute. 
Now, however, we have the technology to compare across languages and time to get closer to seeing an accurate picture of what actually happened and what is pure fantasy.